This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Vinny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to Paradise, Louisiana. Here we are again on Segan Lane at Pier Bait and Tackle. And Don, we, we, we're getting into the end of September. Still got some warm days, but uh, can we have some cool days coming? First show of the fall season. Here it is, you know. Hunting season's already come. Some of them are closed already, but they'll be reopened. We've got a long list of hunting coming up this year. Yeah, well, we got to make another wish to fish, and uh, it, it was... So much fun, They're like it always is. We was at Lake Catherine Island Marina mm -hmm. again, and what they're doing such a great job, and they supporting everything. They support Venetian Isle Rodeo this mm -hmm. year, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you what, the stewards just work so hard to make everybody happy. Sometimes I think they work too hard, they're gonna burn out, but they, they do a great job. That's what I was at, I was at the tournament. We got something, I don't know if Chris is gonna show it, but somebody was testing, you know, my knowledge of or what's the word I want to use? My pants for eating anything? Oh, what's okay. that word? Is it, is it pants for I'm, eating anything? I'm not sure. I'm thinking, I'm trying to come up with the word, but it's escaping you, me right you now. You're better with them big words. Well, I'm, yeah, but I got to have some clue of what you're looking for. <laughs> well, it's my habit then, maybe. Reputation? Is that Rep the reputation? Yeah, a habit, yeah. Of Either eating one. anything? You? I should have knew better try to find a new word. Okay. <laughs> but, well, uh, we'll figure that, that out. That's it, Donnie. And I know we, we got a lot of good fishing reports right now and that fall weather's doing it. Spillways falling. So, mm -hmm. uh, Pretty busy uh, news segment, too. You know, we got some uh, updates on the snapper season. Uh, we had a longtime employee of Wildlife and Fisheries that retired. And we've also got some uh, photos that you, the viewers, have sent us that are pretty interesting, and you'll want to stick around for those. Plus the Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report, a hunting report, H and H tournament report, all coming up next on Paradise, Louisiana. The Louisiana Wildfowl Festival is coming to the Castine Center at Mandeville's Pelican Park. On display will be over 2,000 hand-carved and collected decoys and other stunning wildlife by world champion carvers. Compare your favorites with judges awarding over $40,000 in prizes. Appreciate and purchase through Sunday's auction outstanding wildlife and wildfowl art. See live decoy carving and painting at the Louisiana Wildfowl Festival October 7th and 8th at the Castine Center in Mandeville. Complete details at lwccg.com. I caught this grass and Mr. Debbie wondered what it tastes like. They asked me if it was any good to That's eat. a bass? The only person I know would be Gary. Grass. Oh, you caught this grass? That's for me? I, got, I have to eat it? If I take a bite, you gonna take a bite? No. Huh? <laughs> what about you? No. You wouldn't even catch the fish. Wait a minute. If you you a just bite, tell him you go first. Yeah. Right Good stuff. Pretty good, Gary. Yeah. Oh, it tastes like grass. No. <laughs> I bet that smiles like that. Right. <laughs> you didn't think I'd do it, huh? <laughs> What's your name in case I get sick? I hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, 
family and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana, and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. We can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pod's moving in storage solved. Captain Jim Lamar, and this is my mate Jake and Circle J Charters. Shannon Thomas with Real South Outfitters. Hi, I'm Ronald Egan. I'm here with Worcester Fish. I'm just a guy who likes to take people fishing. It's not a business, I'm a truck driver. Hey, I'm Captain Mike May with Freedom Charters out of Slidell, Louisiana, here to fish Wish for Fish. Good morning. Captain Clinton D. Armas here with Getting Hooked in Short Adventures. I'm Trip Dargie from Memphis, Tennessee. Good morning. I'm Captain Matt McCabe with Pro Edge Fishing Charters. Captain Dudley Vandenborg, uh, Deadly Dudley Charters. Uh, welcome to Wish to Fish. We got a fire go down by the riverside. Paradise <laughs> My name's Jacqueline with Bring It Home North Shore, and we're out here with Madison and her brother and sister on the boat next to us today. We have a great group out, and we couldn't thank Wish to Fish enough for bringing us out today. Bring It Home North Shore started just at four years ago, and we provide recreational support to families of deployed military personnel across Southeast Louisiana, and we are gonna have a wonderful day today. And Maddie's already told me that she will kiss her first fish of no, the day. No, I did not say that. <laughs> yes, it's gonna no. happen. And she Not said she's going to catch the biggest fish today, too. Uh, I'll say that. <laughs> I won't do the other ones. Got a good looking woman with her arms around me. Here in a small finger, flip that over. It's just one small, one smooth motion. Let the line go with your finger. You reel your slack up and you pop. That's a popping cord, which attracts the fish. You just pop it and reel your slack up. Some good friends that live down the street. Got a good looking woman with her arms around me. Here in a small town. Where it be back and forward. Oh, wait. Good. Yes! Yay! I got it! All right. All right. Take my baby. <laughs> Get it, baby. Stingray! <laughs> Down the street. 
street. Got a good looking woman with her arm. You got it. Yes. 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 Oh, wait, it's cotton like mine. Like. That's all right. It's, that's awesome. Redfish. How did you catch him? Tell me, tell me the secret. I don't know. Just pure luck, probably. Pure luck. <laughs> I'm throwing him back in. All right, go ahead. to the edge of Lake Bourne and we threw a cork out there against the shoreline and it went away and he grabbed it and brought it in in minutes and he's the one that noticed it had a tag on it. He's like, there's a stick sticking out of it. <laughs> so we got us a tag redfish. So we're gonna have to register this with the Wildlife and Fisheries and find out what that reward is. Caught, caught a lot of fish and uh, we had to throw a few back. It was small, but all in all, we had a lot of fun. We got to see an otter walking down the uh, walking down the seawall over there, and that was pretty cool. Tasia was a big fisherwoman this morning. She was catching her speck of trout every cast. This is one of those foundations that I love to fish because the people that we bring with us, they so enjoy it. Um, lots of them, it's their first time ever going out and going fishing. And, and even some that have fished before, to be able to get into the marsh and reel in some big reds, they love it. And I had all girls today, and they caught every one of the fish that we caught. Anything you do for the military along the way, it's fine. And, and, and it, it was, you know, deployed military people on all the boats today. And, and, and a little boy that was with me, he just had a ball even when we were catching small reds. Bringing Home North Shore started in October of 2013. And when we started, we realized that in the community in St. Tammany Parish, we did not have any type of outfit that sponsored and took care of the kids of our military personnel. There's Mom's Day Out programs, there's great reintegration programs for our military when they return, but we, we didn't have anything that catered to the children. So we founded Brand Home North Shore, and it has been wonderful. Um, it's not a needs-based program, and the biggest challenge that we have is finding families who will actually agree to accept these gifts from our community. Well, the military is a very proud community. It's not about rank, it's not about income with this organization, it's truly about helping the kids and just giving back and doing uh, what's best for the little ones. With going through my husband's first deployment, I can tell you as a military spouse, it was tough at home, um, playing the roles of both mom and dad. So for an organization like this to really step in and help alleviate some of that burden with um, activities for the kids to take up some of that downtime while dad was away, it really helped. In our particular situation, um, last deployment as well as this one that we're currently in, He'll be gone for all of the holidays, so it gets tough on the kids, and you know, we, we are greatly appreciative to an organization such as Bringing Home North Shore and now Wish to Fish um, for, for 
remembering um, the families back home, and it, um, it means a lot. One said, this is not just about fishing. You know, we get a lot of letters from kids that say, thank you very much for letting me go out on the water. So some of these kids have never even seen water before or been on the water. It's just getting them away from the television and away from video games, getting them out there, and giving them the knowledge and experience so they can go out and do it again. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. Stay tuned for more Paradise, Louisiana. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit lawff.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit lawff.org. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. And Gary, we gotta give credit to those captains that make their time available to bring those kids out and complete that wish to fish. They do, every time. They're always there, you know, if something happened, that'd be really be an emergency for them not to show up. But they get a lot out of it. You know, you've seen we've talked to them over the years from Venice to on Lake Charles, wherever we go, those captains, they put in their time. And, you know, they might be encouraging, the, you know, the legacy and where they're coming up, kids fishing, and it might help them in the long run of their kids, but it, it's, um, it's amazing how much time they put in, how much they enjoy it, and how many fish they catch. Well, I'm sure that's some of the most enjoyable customers they ever get a chance to bring out. So again, we thank those captains for participating in making Wish to Fish happen for so many kids. We're also talking about dedication. Uh, a longtime employee of the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries just recently retired. Uh, that's uh, Enforcement Chief Joey Broussard, retired after 27 years of service. He's been the chief there since 2014, and he started a long career with Wildlife and Fisheries back in 1990, working under Winton Vadreen. I know, well, and Winton always shows up some of them. Oh, he does. Commission meeting, he's still there, and you know, and you find out, Winton was a chef. He's still in Opelousas yeah. right now, and buying Briggs and all those partners over there. They bring him in, he still cooks, and he still participates. But if you look at Joy Broussard, if you ever go to council, he is so sort of quiet and laid back, and you can tell he's the ultimate employee. He, he's so loyal and so good, and he's always there. So he's going to be missed. Well, congratulations on your retirement, Joey, and hope you get to do some of that fishing and hunting you've been overseeing for so long. Uh, in other news, Gary, we had a viewer that sent us in a pretty interesting picture. And it was a turtle or, as you thought, some type a of a tortoise. A tortoise. Land. I thought it was a land. Uh, I recognized it because I've been very familiar with the Diamondback Terrapin, which is Louisiana's only saltwater turtle. And, in fact, they've released some to try to bring them back. There was a real scarcity of them. They were protected for a while, and uh, it's, it's just a, one of those unique animals that, uh, to Louisiana, and I want to thank him for sending that picture in. So if you see one, there were several of them released along the southeast Louisiana saltwater coast. So if you happen to see one and it looks like this, that's a diamondback terrapin. Uh, another photograph that came They're in. They're protected, too. Yeah. Another yeah. photograph that came in uh, was of a redfish. You know, we had asked on our radio show 
for people to send us unique markings on tails because we talked about some of the things people find in like my own self we found our initials on a redfish that we caught and there's different designs and patterns but I don't think you'll ever see a better one than this question mark on the back of this redfish and I don't know what that's a sign of but uh, evidently he's asking questions when he's swimming around out there so that's a very unique one sent in by the way by Dean Marullo I want to thank Dean for sending that in another picture you're looking at uh, this was misidentified as yet another beached whale. We had the sperm whale that was uh, kind of a juvenile, some, some of the sub-adult that was uh, beached a, a few weeks back and uh, they did some, some autopsy on it and they're hoping to get the results and find out the cause of death. Mandy Tumlin and that crew with Wildlife and Fisheries. Well, this one was reported as a small whale by Grand Isle officials and it was later determined by biologists that this is actually a Rizos dolphin much smaller, nine foot long. does have a kind of a whale look to it, but it's a dolphin that normally is in much, much deeper water than along the coast of Grand Isle. So they've also done a, a necropsy on that one to find out if they can find any more information on that too. Uh, uh, news. Biggest news that broke though, late last week, uh, red snapper. We've determined now through our lock creel and our accounting method, uh, thanks to the fishermen that turn in those ROLP, the Recreational Offshore Landing Permit information, uh, we have now found out that we were short 100,000 pounds of our quota of red snapper for Louisiana. So at, not this week, but next week, uh, the Wildlife and Fisheries is having a regular commission meeting here in Baton Rouge, and they will determine uh, whether we will proceed and have a fall season, which it looks pretty good. So what we thought started off as a three-day season turned out to be a long season on weekends and Fridays and the holidays, and now we might even get a fall season out of it just demonstrating the importance of getting management turned over to the states as opposed to the feds where it's been and giving people a lot more time. And the wildlife and fishers are also taking comments too on, on what you think and what your thoughts. So mm -hmm. you can go to their website now and, and you can uh, put in, not only them, the, the Gulf Council too. They, a lot of these people right now, if you want to weigh in, now's the time to do it. It's too, very important to get user group participation from the fishermen. All right, we'll be right back with the H&H &H Tournament Report here from Paradise, Louisiana. watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hi, I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem, you can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help! Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving and storage solved. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. 
STEMCO, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Welcome to the H and H Tournament Report, and Gary, the Venetian Isles Tournament success last weekend at the Lake Catherine Island Marina. It was almost a success. They didn't send me enough pictures and information right now, but I got a list from Becky Cheney right now. So, and by the way, your your great you call him your great or your grand? What, We're starting you again with the great. That's your nephew. He's a grand nephew. Grand nephew. Grand nephew. He, yeah. he did good. He won a bunch His of His children will places. be my great grand. Well, I'm nephews. gonna give it a nine and under. Nine. The bastard. At uh, third place was Michael Casey. Second place was Taylor Burlett. And first place was Michael Casey. And the catfish it was Drew. The Butte. Reese Burlett and Michael Casey. At first place in a croaker. Michael Casey, Drew Dubuque, Dalen Suarez, and then uh, there no none in the flounder. Now they got one more age group here I want to do, and this is all I'm gonna give down. I'm gonna give just the youth division because they got so many lists. That's one thing about the Venetian Islands Rodeo. Mm -hmm. They got divisions for everything: rough fish, salt water, fresh water. But uh, this is the youth division. And third place was Tyler Barlett. Second place was uh, Cohen Navarre. Austin DeFaso was the overall winner in the Bass. And Flounder, they had a second place with Mackenzie McIntyre, and first place with Mason Pilch Pilcher. And the uh, Redfish, Claudia Scarpelli. You ought to know how I just play them names. That's all of your area. Scarpelli, that sounds Italian. That's Scarpel. Uh, third place, Mackenzie McIntyre was second. First place was, was Claude Scarpel. And uh, Sheephead, in second place with Mackenzie McIntyre, Cameron Bertoloni, and then Speckled Trout, third place was uh, Cohen Navarre, Dominic Filo, and first place was Brandon Barlett. So down there, you got there's tons of them, and uh, it was a successful tournament. By the way, they also helped put on that wish to fish the day before the tournament, so and I thank them good. Venetian Isles just making a comeback. I understand you, at one time they had slowed down, but it's been one of the biggest rodeos over on the North Shore for years, am I correct? Yeah, it's actually on the Chef area and it uh, was gone for quite a few years and the folks there just really got to missing it and they brought it back. So they get my vote as the comeback rodeo of the, of the decade, really. Well, good, Done a yeah. good job to them. And congratulations to all those kids who won. And also mm -hmm. we had the Turlings Catholic Classic took place. The Turlings Catholic Classic right there came in as uh, Chris Gilry and Carter Carrier had 11.2 pounds. Uh, Moon Griffon. Griffin, I called him Griffin, it's Griffon. And on the radio, I guess that's the same one. And Paul Miller had 11.06. Third place was Brian Martin and Kevin Hoffire, they had 9.88. Fourth place was Chester Bigno and Jeff Dago, they had 9.77. Fifth was Neil Roban and Michael Roban, 9.56. Big best was Moon Griffon and Paul Miller. We also had what we always have and doing such a, still a tremendous job is the Junior Southwest Bass Masters had him out of Bell River Public Landing. Uh, they had 43 anglers this year. It had beautiful weather. They had 50, um, excuse me, they had 35 fish stringers. And uh, Miss Cindy Bro and her husband Jim, they, they followed this and they sent us all these reports and take all these pictures and uh, we can't thank them enough. I'm gonna give you just the first place. 15 to 18 year old first place was Evan Matty. He from Greenwood Springs. The big bass was Horson Taney with 3.29. From 11 to 14, first place was Hayden Stanley. He had 11.7. And Big Bass was Craig Collins at 4.09. 7 to 10 year old was Hunter Robinson at 7.65. Big Bass was Caden Sellers at 2.24. And the elder division, Mike Stanley, had Big Bass and the top string at 13.53. So thank you again for y'all giving me those reports. If you're more interested in fishing these high school tournaments all over the state, get your team up. You can call them. You can call Gene Hoover. It's, uh, he's the president of the High School Association. It just keeps growing and growing, Don. 
Yeah, I got an email in this week from Cabrini Girls High in New Orleans. They've formed their own girls fishing club now. And I also got an email in from the Rommel uh, Fishing Club. They're over 100 members strong. So those fishing clubs are going really strong in the schools. I mean, that's a good Popping. thing to see. And that's what keeps our heritage going, our fishing and outdoor heritage. All right, while well, this is the tournament report, what's coming up this weekend and next? Boy, I'm going to need some help. October 7th is full. I've never had that date. We have a lot of tournaments that we have conflicts with, mm -hmm. and I can't go to all of them. I'm planning on being at the ladies' rodeo. That's going to be on Friday and a Saturday. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's got them all right. They've got the Louisiana Wildfire Carving Festival. That's in where? Mandeville? A Castine Center. And then Fountain Blue State Park. We, we gave you the, the north side. Uh, Bass Series. Bass to, yeah, right. It's October the 7th. Again, you get in touch with the Northside Fishing Report, and then you find out if you want North, to join Yeah, in. North Shore Fishing Report, Keith Lusher. He's got all the details on it. Now, what else you got? You got another well, one? Well, we're going to have an Shore. inaugural tournament kicking off. It's going to be the Lake Pontchartrain Fishing Rodeo and Party <laughs> called The Crush, and it's going to be at our Roban's Wharf Dockside Seafood Restaurant Saturday, August 7th, and it's to benefit Dose of the Coast, Ashley Ferguson's organization that helps benefit uh, families with cancer. So uh, if you can participate in that, check it all out. I, I'm leaving one out. I don't remember from last week to this week. I want you to do me a favor. Whenever you want to send in announcement of your tournament or your rodeo or any event you have, start three weeks in advance and remind me every Sunday. Please remind me every Sunday so I can write it down. I can forward to Chris and then I won't get fussed at by Chris. Poor thing. He does a tremendous job and uh, one of these days he's going to get tired of that. What but me holding him up with these reports. But, Don, they're very important to y'all. They're very important to us. So please try to remember. Yeah, and just like we way. ask you to send your pictures in with your reports, send those pictures in with the results of your event, too. Yeah, we sure love to give them. All right, we'll be right back. We've got the hunting report coming up and the Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report. We're at Segan Lane in Baton Rouge. We're at Superior Bait and Tackle, where you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express locations. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Beef Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolo's.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. The Louisiana Wildfowl Festival is coming to the Castine Center at Mandeville's Pelican Park. On display will be over 2,000 hand-carved and collected decoys and other stunning wildlife by world champion carvers. Compare your favorites with judges awarding over $40,000 in prizes. Appreciate and purchase through Sunday's auction outstanding wildlife and wildfowl art. See live decoy carving and painting at the Louisiana Wildfowl Festival October 7th and 8th at the Castine Center in Mandeville. Complete details at lwccg.com. Aggressive, modern, and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. Welcome to the Berkeley Abu Garcia Fishing Report. We're going to talk a little bit of hunting, though. Hunting seasons came and some went. 
Dove season is officially closed in Louisiana, but we got two more splits to look forward to. Teal season unusually opened on a Friday this year, so it's unusually going to close on a Saturday, Saturday instead of a Sunday, the last 30th of, of this month. month. The last day of the month, your last day at Teal, but you got the small game seasons opening up the very next day, Squirrel and Rabbit, October 1, that traditionally opens up. Um, and you know, the other thing that you, you got is Nutria, but not a lot of people hunt Nutria. But if you want you, to... A lot of people <laughs> want to, and it's an exciting thing, and you'd be doing people a favor, killing them. Well, the teal season, Gary, you had a good trip. I had a good trip in different areas of the state. We got some mixed reports. The official state report this week said on the management areas it was 0.7 bird per hunter, which is not good. Excellent is around 2.0, while well, the limit is 6. But on state management areas, if you can get around 2 birds per hunter, it's good. So it was a little off in those areas. Now, there is a lot of hope that we're expecting some kind of a front to come through. You know, we're taping this now early in the week, but later in the week, we're supposed to have a front come through, and that could push some more teal into some areas where they haven't seen them yet. So hopefully some guys that haven't got their birds yet will get a shot at them. Well, the reports I got, Charles Williams was one of those people. Opening day in Delacroix, he was mm -hmm. one of the few people that did good. They had his weight. He killed it then. But it went south after that. He and he kept. He was hunting with Randy DeLeese. He sent me a picture. Uh, four straps and stringers. I've been getting reports from them all week. They're hunting at the lake in Calhoun. Mm -hmm. They showed up them, and they weren't there the opening weekend, but they weren't there the opening day, but they were there Sunday and Monday. I got reports from them. They're still killing them up there in the Calahula area. Uh, the flyover didn't show hardly no birds on there right now. They're up in the north of Tensaw where Bobby Black and them got some bean fields and different uh, rice fields that they, they was hoping they are going to be good for this year. Mm -hmm. They didn't see any teal covered up with spoonbill. Them smiling mountains was <laughs> all over the place. So, you know, that's when the report I get. My brother and them in Iowa, uh, they've been having people coming and there's some of the clients and been going and during the week, the fog's been holding them up. And when the fog lifts, the birds are around there, but it's so hot, they get out of there. It's, it's really too hot on the dogs and everything. It was up in the 90s, mm -hmm. middle of the day. Uh, but uh, last, let's see, it was Friday. Yeah, Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, they had four hunters, and instead he could kill 24, they could kill 20. Mm -hmm. So it was a good hunt, and it was out of there before it got bad. But that fog has really been messing people up, even in the Gaydon area where there's still a lot of birds. I've seen the report. What you hearing on Burris and Venice? Now, I heard them people in Venice don't see them way down river, but y'all were killing them in Burris. Are they still there? I had Ryan Lambert on the radio this week, and he was covered up in birds early in the morning. So he's still continuing to have some good action there. And again, a lot's going to depend on the frontal system that's moving through. Let's don't forget about archery. I mean, archery, bow hunting season's right around the corner. And we also have one section of Louisiana that's already been open now for about a week. If you want to check the areas, go to the Wildlife and Fisheries website, and you'll see all the different areas and opening and closing dates for Louisiana. Also, the youth hunts and, yeah. mm -hmm. and a, a physical challenge hunt. So they're going to be open up in the Wildlife Management area and other places. So you check with the wildlife fishing. All right, let's move on to some fishing. Uh, I got a good report from the Upper Pearl River, our friend Toby Cooper. I've been catching some pretty nice sized bass up there. Uh, you should see it on the screen. He picked up a couple up there last weekend. The water level is really kind of straightened out, hoping that water will cool down. Even though this is fall season, the water temperatures are still pretty warm in that area. Uh, outside of that, I'm getting a few Sacolay reports from, you know, again, Bayou Black area, which has really been the shining star for the, the crappie, but uh, other than that, what are you hearing from the basin area? Yeah, we have a lot of good reports from basin mm -hmm. You look at these two tournaments that these kids had, uh, they did well. Uh, Mark Burns, right here mm -hmm. in at Sevier Bait and Tackle, he made a trip to Saw. Uh, I also want to give a little warning. Now, you notice he showed us a warning ticket. That's all, and a lot of people, I don't know if they remember this, but every landing, and they say in Louisiana, Got a 300 yards. 300 foot. 300 foot. 100 yards. 100 yards. 300, man, that's got to be right on it, close, huh? 300 foot warning, no wake zone. So when you're coming into a landing, mm -hmm. uh, whether there's no boats there or not, it just will give you all a reminder. It's been in on the books a long time, so a lot of people didn't know. But he was catching Sacolay in the Pigeon area. I'm getting other reports in the Pigeon area. Not much in the Bell River area. Lake Verrett, I'm doing the bass, this sporadic, but you know where you're going. They're finding that clear water 
or and I'm not talking about crystal clear water. I'm talking about moving water that's a little bit muddy. They're catching fish. Gary Krause gave me a report from the Terrebonne Marsh. He was killing me. He was getting ready to do a show over there with Tony, and then all of a sudden, tide quit moving. Tide is so important, even in the chapel house. Spillway, whether the water is moving by wind or if it's dropping, and it's, it, that is the best time, and look for places where the water is mixing, is always going to be good. Buy Black is another one in fresh water. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the same reports. Over there, around, you know, all of the bayous in Bonfuca, Mike Devon said he was fishing bon, Bonfuca or Bonifica, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. He was doing that, fishing all around the Rigolese. He catching bass when he gets at the mouth of those bayous, Pearl River and everything. Him and his, and his uh, wife, Lagoni. Lagoni has been catching some tremendous sized flounder. I remember my friend Scooter and them used to fish that. They used to fish, Scooter Groat and his wife used to catch tremendous size. These look like doormats over there in the Wrigley's. I don't know exactly where they were fishing, but Mike and him were fishing Miller's Ditch mm -hmm. and uh, fishing the regular Wrigley's. They're catching flounder. They turn in the other day. They had eight. They about ready to turn on in that. So that's sort of a mixed water. Dudley's also telling me him and the grandson, they go in the evening when they get off of school, taking live shrimp in the canals around there off of the lake and uh, over there by his, uh, where he lives in Southern Vision. They catch an unbelievable amount of bass. I heard so many reports, people, but nobody wants to take me yet. Dudley's offering to take me, tell me I can't bring nothing but live shrimp. I, I don't know. He sells baits. So you can understand that. Don, I, you got any other reports out to Southwest? I got a bunch of more reports, but let me take a breath because I'm running out of breath. Let uh, me you, take a if breath. If you're ready to move to saltwater, well, the place to catch a lot of big fish is going to be Breton Island. Uh, Tofield Bourgeois has been flying out of there, and he's coming back with wheelbarrows full of speckled trout. I also talked to some boaters who went out there. It has been on. You're talking some two to four pound specks out there, and plenty of them. Uh, that transition that we look forward to each fall season hasn't really started. If you're going to be on the inside, you're pretty much limited to the redfish, the sheephead, and the black drum. Uh, it's going to be several weeks before the trout start showing up in places like the, the bridges, Highway 11, I-10, uh, even into the interior marshes. And speaking of interior marshes, as far as to the east, uh, Biloxi Marsh has been really good for redfish, uh, along with Port Sulphur for the kayakers. I'm getting reports from both of those areas that if you go into those marsh areas and you kind of work the banks, get you a really good pair of glasses, you're going to spot those fish. It's sight fishing at its finest right now because those redfish, whether it's a spawning move or whatever, they're ganged up in big groups and you just see them all coming by. Sometimes the tails and backs are out of the water. And I tell you, if that doesn't get you going, nothing does. Well, let me tell you this. Dulac, the large, I mean, getting reports from over there. Uh, the Mears went over there and made a trip just to find out. They weren't fishing for nothing. They were looking for trout. Mm -hmm. They went in there and they got them in the small lakes in them, the large, and them uh, on their points. Uh, Ronnie Mears sent me, uh, he didn't send me a picture, but he sent me a report. They had his dad with them on their first trip out. They had 65, so that's a good start. I'm getting also reports of the large on bass and redfish in the mix report coming from there. A lot of those fish have been caught on spinner baits and then under a cork where the matrix shads and different color, the, the other kind of baits. The lemon head's been a hot color. You was talking about, you see we fished the Lake Bourne the other day, the rig, there's a lot of white trout mm -hmm. in Lake Bourne right now. Off the side, we're using fresh shrimp. When we run out of live shrimp, we were using fresh shrimp and we're catching white trout and every now and then a, a good size keeper speckled trout. Speckle trout's been running small. Uh, they got a redfish coming, and Ken Jones and John Benoit caught a bunch of big, beautiful redfish in Dulac. Uh, Captain Chris Dufour, fishing out of Fouchon over there with, with uh, Chris, Chris Moran. Uh, they had the name of the boat is Full Contact. He had Freddie Summerlin and Matt Marshall and Doug Hen Hen Hendricks' son. Uh, they caught the tremendous size tuna. Been catching tuna in there, they're following the shrimp boats. You seen last week we showed yeah. you where where Buggy uh, Buggy and them had the same thing. They were catching fish behind them boats. So uh uh I told you to mention Wrigley's. I, I, I wanna say one more thing. You know, the wish to fish. I, I had a young lady named Michaela Pino in the boat with me and her dad who's been deployed just got back. 
I've never seen a young lady so intense on fishing that long. I've had a bunch of them. She is in the top 10 for being in a boat, being patient and fishing hard. When they're wooden biting, mm. when we're running, she did not put that rod down, except maybe to get a, a poway, and that's it. She, Makeda, I took a picture with you because it's going in my Hall of Fame. That's it. All right, very good. Send your pictures, your reports, whatever information you got to Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. Don't forget, if you're going to be shooting with a cell phone camera, turn it horizontally. Fits the screen much better and gives us a really good shot. Love the pictures on the water, but we'll take them from the dock, too. Just send them again, Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. And we'll see you next week with another edition of Paradise, Louisiana. Louisianians know the importance of our state's coast, from the coastal towns and communities that support residents and tourism, to the burgeoning petrochemical industry, from the millions of birds, waterfowl and fish that thrive in its rivers, bayous and marshes, to the plants that blossom in its rich silted soil, from the tiniest of microorganisms to the 2,000 ton oil tankers, our state's coast is a complex working system, a regional gumbo, and our home. But there is a new threat. This new threat cannot be detected by radar, was not caused by catastrophe, and is not created by man. Rather, a small insect known as Phragmites scale is infesting thousands of acres of rose cane the dominant vegetation in the Mississippi River Delta. Back in the fall of 2016, Mr. Earl Armstrong and uh, Trevor Victoriano, one of our technician supervisors that work in the field, started noticing cane dying off in, in, in rapid numbers, rapid amounts over vast areas. And they kind of brought it to our attention and said, hey, you need to get down there. We need to take a look at this. We got a serious issue. So when we got down there, we started investigating it. We knew we had a problem, but we couldn't identify what the problem is. They found an insect. They found something on the cane that it was to identify it. And so finally this past March, we've identified that problem and we're working with LSU uh, to, to monitor the program, monitor the scale, its development, its spread, and to find solutions. The Phragmites scale, more commonly known as Rozo cane mealybug, is believed to have originated from China and Japan, an area of the world where Rozo is harvested for use in many industrial and agricultural applications. But here along our coast, the rozo cane is an integral part of keeping the Louisiana coast intact. Unlike some marsh vegetation, rozo cane is one of the most erosion resistant marsh plants. It assists in building land by trapping Mississippi River sediment. It serves as habitat for birds and fish. It can grow in salt and freshwater environments, and it serves as the first main buffer for our inland communities from tropical storm surges. I mean, so this is uh, certainly a, a new uh, threat to coastal restoration and coastal protection, something we've got to keep a close eye on and something that we're certainly very interested in supporting, uh, getting the answers that we need to ensure that we can uh, get ahead of this, hopefully, um, and uh, stem the tide if indeed it is the issue that's affecting the cane now. It's a potential to be a, a really big deal on, on a number of fronts, both on the restoration and protection side in terms of our coastal wetlands, coastal ecology, but also from an agricultural standpoint. Rosso cane also provides much protection to coastal marsh oil platforms and pipelines. Rosso cane is a vegetation that's very hardy, very robust, and it really helps slow down coastal erosion. Because it's so woody and has a nice root base, it protects the marsh. And a lot of these marshes are around this oil and gas infrastructure, such as pipelines and wells and platforms. And these platforms and wells in the marsh are designed uh, to be built in wetlands and protected by rozo cane. So as we lose that rozo cane, when we lose it, all that infrastructure is going to be exposed to the Gulf and to wave energies of the Gulf. But in recent years, an obvious problem is occurring in the growth of rozo cane and is believed to be due to the manifestation of the rozo cane mealybug. The most evident area of impact is in the lower Plaquemines Parish area near the mouth of the Mississippi River, where in less than a year, believe that over 100,000 acres of Rosso has been affected by the scale. Biologists are alarmed at the severity of the scale's impact and are working to find ways to stop its spread. We're on the Delta National Wildlife Refuge, which is north of the, the State Wildlife Management Area of Pasaluke. 
Um, we're, in a, we're in a small, probably five, six acre, which once was two years ago at this time, a healthy fixed stand of roseau cane, which is now starting to revert to open water. You have very sparse vegetation with roseau cane. We're getting some Sagittaria, which is bull tongue or delta duck potato growing in. Um, we suspect that the scale is, is probably the, the main driver to pushing, setting this area back. What this island looked like in 2015, and that's in, uh, that's in January. And we'll flip forward to November of 2016. You see it starting to open up on this end here. And this is just last week, how much it's opened up. So here we have this scale. It's native from China. I uh, haven't seen also in Japan. And uh, here we just found it in black and porridge. So what you can see here is will be a large female. As you can see, measures almost half an inch and is actually uh, a mature female. This, as, as you start going up, you have more infestation. So what we notice it happens is here, these females will start producing eggs and then the nymphs, the babies, will start crawling and moving to the next segment of the stem and colonizing it. And then it keeps moving uh, to the upper parts of the plant. So by the end of the growing season, think about uh, October or November, you have all these uh, scales covering this plant. So that may be one of the factors why this plant is dying. Over time, these scales will be depleting the energy of Russell. The Rosso cane mealybug is a very new threat to our coast, which brings a lot of questions on how it can be controlled and eliminated. What we're trying to do, we have a plan to, is definitely a plan that is, work, work, is gonna work in phases. So the phase one is to understand uh, right now, what is the distribution of the scales, um, what is the impact that it's having in different locations. But at the same time, we want to understand whether we can use different varieties of Rosso as a potential restoration. Something really interesting that occurs in Plaquemines Parish is that there are four varieties of Rosso present in this area, and maybe they have some variation in the level of resistance. As our state's biologists work to combat this rapid spreading threat, there are ways that we can help assist in stopping the spread of the Rosso cane mealybug. First, here is how you identify areas that have been affected. Next, make sure you take precautions to stop the spread of the scale by thoroughly washing your boat before you travel away from marinas and make sure not to move cane from one area to another. So the role of the public at this point is really try very hard not to spread this stuff. There, um, we, we were asking boaters to wash down their boats at the marinas before they leave in order to keep from spreading it. That's the biggest thing the public can do. We have a lot of questions we can't answer at this time and we're learning as fast as we can how to combat this. But right now, to be aware, of what's going on and just really help us in not spreading this bug. A lot of the things that, that threaten the system, this coastal marshes down here are, are beyond individual control, but this is one issue where we as, as individual duck hunters and recreationists in general can play an important role. And the key message that duck, Ducks Unlimited and a lot of the other folks here would want to send to, to people using this marsh, especially duck hunters, is, is don't move the rozo. Uh, and you can look at it and, and you, you may think it's healthy and not infected, but, uh, but, but beneath the, the leaves that the, this invasive pest may actually be there. So any movement of Rozo out of this area or even from one area to the other in this locale uh, is, is potentially bad news for the, for the larger system. So the key message is don't move the Rozo we know. Biologists believe that the Mississippi River Delta is the main area of concern at this time but are also surveying other areas across the state's coast to determine if the scales are infesting beyond Plaquemines Parish. So there's a multi-plan strategy, including mapping of the vegetation. We have a strong component of the education. We want to let them know the public that how we can prevent the spread of the scale. The issue of a host plant resistance, that will be the project about biarities. And finally, some of the uh, whether we can use insecticide in a limited areas. So those kind of the four objectives of the um, research plan that we have. 
If you believe there are areas near you that may have been affected by the Rosso cane mealybug, it's important that you contact the LSU Ag Center or Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Together, we can ensure that our state's coast thrives for future generations. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.